good day everyone it's caitlin today we are patterning an original infant sack and making our own two reproductions as well as making some 19 teens little baby bibs hello and welcome so we are going to make two baby sacks for the 19 teens and two or three bibs but to start off with let's start with the sack i have an original here that's a very simple shape and it should be very easy to make up. And it has this gorgeous embroidery on it. And we're not going to totally recreate that this simply because I don't have time to do all the scallopy stuff. So we're going to bind the whole thing in silk ribbon instead of doing the silk embroidery. So what I'm going to do first is go ahead and make myself a little pattern. Sack number one, I got just a little bit of this cotton velveteen, which I thought would be nice. Don't know where I put the pins, but okay, we'll just work on it this way, it's fine. Sack number two, we got lots and lots of this blue wool. And here's the blue one. So those are the two sacks. Now for bibs. I got the cotton linen blend for the outer layer and it's a cotton diaper for the inner layer and I'm doing it two layers um, mostly because I know that's going to be super absorbent. Let's start with the first sack. So this is the velvet one. I have here some two inch silk ribbon. This is in a purpley color, because that's what I have. And we're gonna bind this entire thing with the ribbon. We're gonna use a half inch seam allowance. This ribbon goes all the way around now. I'm just gonna iron that flat. Then I'm gonna take it, fold it once, fold it over again, and find my pins. So the front, we're going to have something that looks like this. Alright, so I have that one over to be hand stitched next, so we're going to go ahead and machine sew this one. I have a one inch ribbon here, so we're going to do much smaller um, stitching here. So I'm going to do three eighths inch here. So what we'll do on this one is we'll fold it over and I'll just stitch it down like that. So we'll have that on the other side. All right, this one's actually looking a whole lot better than the other one, up uh, in the front and the back, because I don't have to fold it, you know, I don't have to fold it and then fold it. So this is a lot thinner and finer and it just lays better because it's not so thick. You can see how, how that looks. I think I would be liking this better than the other one which is strange, and you wouldn't think blue and brown for a baby would look as cute, but I think it's looking adorable. So now I'm at the point where I can hand stitch both of those. I think I am going to go ahead and work on all the machine work for the bibs as well, and then we'll just sit and do a whole bunch of hand work all at once. Alright, let's start on these bibs. Okay. 
I'm going to clip corners all in a second. Basically anything that goes in like this is going to need to just be clipped just a little bit. Not going through the sewing, of course. I think this is a pretty good gradual curve. I don't think I need to do anything down there, but kind of where this curves in a little bit more, I'm going to kind of trim out some sections. Alright, now we get to make sure everything's nice and flat and then iron it. I don't know why I'm doing it from the side because that's actually the back side. I think this is going to be the one that I quilt. I think I might leave this one diaper side up. I am going to need to change the black thread to white now. Um, let's see. I think we're going to do a diagonal. Alright, so I finished going the first way, so now I'm going the second way to make these little squares. Alright, so I have here the green trimmed with purple, and I'm just sewing the trim on. The nice thing about doing this by hand is you really get to feel the ribbon and so there's parts that were you know not looking so good when I was ironing them but now that I'm here actually sewing it I can kind of manipulate the fabric a little bit more by hand whereas by machine I wouldn't have that option. There's some that go like straight about half an inch here and then like this is much thicker on this side. Like clearly I didn't measure that very well so I'm able to actually you know fold that in a little bit more make sure it looks nice there was some puckering that still needs to be ironed out, but that I'm able to fix, since I'm doing this by hand, that would be much more difficult to fix if I was doing this by machine. I think in our modern brains, a lot of the time, we're so afraid of hand stitching because we've been told our whole lives that, oh, it takes forever. You'll never get it done. It took years to make something. And I still see that perpetuated all over the place. But it's, it, it doesn't take forever. It doesn't take years. It doesn't even take months. But oftentimes, you can do things so much better by hand than by machine. They will look so much nicer. Just the other day, I was actually on one of my sewing machine groups uh, for Baby Lock sewing machines because I own a couple of those. Um, and there was somebody who was ranting about somebody else who said that hand embroidery looked better than machine embroidery and everybody on that group was like well that's ridiculous machine embroidery is so much prettier than hand embroidery and there are things you can do by a uh, machine that you can't do by hand and I'm sitting here going like what because 
I can think of a ton of things I can do by hand that I can't do by machine. But I can't think of one thing that I can do by machine but can't do by hand. Not one thing. And I almost posted and said something. Like, can you please give me an example? But I didn't want to stir up that pot, so I left it alone. But I was thinking, you're going, it's an embroidery machine. Like, they're talking about, they're talking about embroidery machines. I don't have one of those, but they were talking specifically embroidery machines on that post. And I was absent here going, embroidery machines can, are basically like normal sewing machines. But the vast majority of embroidery people do by machine is just satin stitch. That's all it is. Like, that's 90% of it. And people have been doing satin stitch a lot longer than there have been machines that did satin stitch. So, now satin, I will say that satin stitch can take some practice to get it to look right when you're doing it by hand. And maybe that's what she meant. She couldn't get it to look good by hand, so she does it by machine. Which is perfectly acceptable. That's why we have those options now. We have machine embroidery. But to say that you can't do something by hand that you could do by machine... I don't know about that. Anyway, that was a little bit of a rant. But I'm going to continue on this. Alright, so I have it all at least put together and all the etching on, which is nice. And I'm starting to put the little bows on, because that's how the original is um, put together. So I had to take the bows out um, to pattern it. But there's these little strings at the sleeves, which tie the sleeves together. And there are ties at the very top, of course, to close the sack. And I don't have my measuring tape here, but you can see this isn't very long. I mean, it's maybe six, seven inches. Um, I literally just took this one and I measured it out. So just right against the ribbon without any um, tools. So my ribbon is a shiny side and a matte side. I'm putting the matte side towards me, folding it into thirds. And then folding this edge under towards the good sides. So that side's the shiny side, and that side's the matte side that's facing me. So, on the edge of the sleeve, about halfway between the point, or either point, I suppose, we're going to put this little ribbon. Now, of course, my ribbon's much thicker than the original. The original is only half an inch, and this is two inches, so it's quite a bit bigger, but I can't get this color ribbon in a thinner width, so it's going to have to be that. All right, so from the front, you shouldn't be able to see any of those stitches. You get a nice little, nice long tail there. It's a beautiful little sack. I love the colors, and that was a very nice choice. Alright, bibs. So I um, got rid of all the strings hanging off the quilted one, and we're just going to use some cotton tape. I think I have some silk ribbon on order, but let's go ahead and get this done. I feel like I want quite a bit of a tail, so we'll just make it this long. I don't know how long this is, but this is what we're going to do. And because we're not embroidering either the plain ones right now, I think we're going to make one this side, you know, the regular fabric being the right side, and one making the uh, uh, diaper the right size. So it's a little bit different. really wish I could have found my embroidery supplies, because there's so many options for embroidery bibs. Alright, we're going to do basically the exact same thing, just whip stitching all the way around. Alright, there's one bib. I feel like these ties are choking hazards. It's basically just a running stitch, but between layers, so you don't see it from the top or the bottom.
right, that's all we're going to get done with the bibs. So I guess we work on the last sack. We're stitching down the ribbon just like we did before. That's the back side, but that's where one of them goes. So I'm just gonna kind of do the same thing into thirds. It's gonna make it very small up here, but that's okay. And there's no right or wrong to this ribbon, so it doesn't matter which way I fold that end in. Could've done. I could have gone down to get my brown thread, but you know, this was already here on the bed with me, and it's close enough. These little sacks might be my favorite favorite 20th century baby thing we've made so far. It actually, I don't know if it's my favorite baby thing we've made so far in total, though, because those little petticoats and stays are so stinking cute. Like, isn't that just the cutest? It's adorable. All right, here everything is. So let's start with the bibs. So this one I decided to go with the diaper going out. So this will always just probably stay this way simply because, you know, the diaper's decoration in and of itself. This one I put plain fabric first. And so eventually I'm going to embroider on this. I probably am going to do the Our Pet one because I just thought that was adorable. But again, I got to find my uh, embroidery floss before that and the quilted one. I wouldn't be totally opposed to doing the quilted on all of them. And then the sacks, which are just gorgeous. I mean, I'm sorry, but those little bows just make the whole project. They're adorable. I mean, just look at that. How cute that is. And this one. This one is probably my favorite color combination, like if I were to wear them. For the babies, I think I like the other one better, but I do need to iron this still. You can kind of see that I didn't get all the wrinkles out yet. I haven't ironed this at all, actually. And yeah, we didn't quite copy the original to the, you know, full extent. I did not have time to do all that scalloping. I'm doing a lot more scalloping with another project. So I got two entire giant shawl, you know, length blankets to do all that tiny embroidery on and I did not have time to add this to it but this is a great compromise it still has the silk edging and it's a period you know technique so I'm happy with it anyway thank you so much for joining me today as we made our 19 teens infant outerwear if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe to the channel click the bell notification so you're notified anytime I upload a new video and as always have a fantastic week I'll see you back here in the next video